everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL. Thank you, Larry. Coming to you from just off the New Jersey Turnpike in East Rutherford. We are just about set for football on EA Sports from MetLife Stadium. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Los Angeles Rams and the New York Giants. of six and it'll set him back for second down. When I watch plays like that, I give a lot of thanks that my DNA did not make me an offensive tackle because that is a very difficult job to hold your block against a really good defensive end and hang on to it. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. Touchdown LA. Kenny Brent, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Rams are going to take a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. Bobby Rainey now to return it. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. Throwing on first down is Manning. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. Here's a nugget, Charles, on OBJ. This year he had 101 catches. Now 288 for his first three years in the league. That ties him with his former LSU teammate Jarvis Landry for most catches for a receiver in their first three years in the NFL. And just think about it this way. LSU is known as a running back factory yeah. as well. So wide receivers coming into the league and doing the damage they're doing, absolutely incredible. But I do know this. OBJ will tease his former teammate and say, don't forget, we're tied. But I missed a few games my rookie year. If I played those games, I'd be way ahead of you. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. Working from the gun, Manning. To Shepard, complete over the middle. And a pretty little juke move there, but not a ton to show for it afterwards as he's brought down. Second down now after the pass completion. Manning to throw on second down. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Mark Barron. And they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. Partner, these L.A. Rams, as they come back out here for the next offensive series, they've now missed the playoffs 12 straight seasons. Of course, this last one, their first back in L.A. They were 3-1, so much hope, but then they lost all but one down the stretch. Hard to believe with a defense that good, but just tells you about the premium that's placed on the offensive side of the ball, especially at the quarterback position. They just didn't have the stability. Even though they drafted Jared Goff, number one in 2016, they'll have to ascend to that number. Be that guy for them in the next season in order for the Rams to finally break that playoff drought. And now they've got some city neighbors in the Chargers of L.A. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. There are so many times during camp and practice that you get bored as a player doing regular drills. But how about that shed and skate drill right there by the linebacker? You do it each and every day, get the blocker away, and get into the backfield and make a big-time tackle. That's what we just saw. Throwing on third, golf. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Charles, that's an important third down stop. You don't want to spot him two touchdowns here early. You're trying to slow momentum down. You've already given up the score. They're coming right back at you. You're exactly right. Being able to hold them there and force a decision on fourth down, that's big for the defense. 
tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. Caught. It's Cruz left side. The completion good for three and it's second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. On second down, here's Manning. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. He's got Cruz complete. And he's going to get this all the way down. It's alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And it's the Giants with a football here as we begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. On first down, Manning. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. Throwing now is Manning. Over the middle to back him. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. But that's the kickstarter right there. Eli Manning finding his guy, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, it's a deadly combination, isn't it? It really is, but what really makes it work is just how unflappable Eli is with his demeanor, able to maintain his calm and his poise. Because we know OBJ, he can run pretty high and get excited out there. Sometimes just one-handed grabs for him. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> just throw it up there. He'll go get it. And now the passing game here in the second quarter is starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Manning, his pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this timeout. Manning going to try and throw on third down. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Mark Barron. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try? In trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone, loose. And this is taken into the end zone. A fumble recovery on a Giants touchdown. The offense was in a tough spot. An opportunistic defense takes advantage. Get the turnover. They get the touchdown, too. I know this is going to sound strange, but oftentimes defenses call for this type of a play in this situation. Offense is pinned back near their own goal line. They tell them, be aggressive. Go for the football. Create a score. That's exactly what they did. And it's a short kick. Taken right around the 19. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. Four down, four down. Hang on now. After the interception, here's Gall. And he gets this up across the th 35 before he's out of bounds. an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Golf on first down. 
And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. Brian Quick, the intended target. And now it's second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Now gone. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they have to fly. Just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. What people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. This one's going toward the sideline. They'll try to play keep away from Beckham. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Yeah. Can he put it aside? Let's find out. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. One receiver left, three to the right. Manning going to throw to Shepard, complete over the middle. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 19 yards on the pick up there. And now they'll have it first and goal. Again, it's Manning. That's caught at the 3. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Sterling Shepard from eight yards out, and the Giants have taken the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front, and now see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. This will be taken about the 12. Oh, what a move. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Dominique Rogers cromartie that late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's try and get some more points. A good pick up there, a 22. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Manning to throw on second down. And all. Not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. I can't imagine we'd see another throw here. Third and goal from the one. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Manning to throw on third and one. And for the third time here, this half it's intercepted. Picked off by Mark Barron. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's right. with the Eagles. That's right. He's then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. Yeah, 
So we have reached halftime with a touch. Well, we're going to let you off a little easy there, LR. Halftime interrupted, and we are ready to get to this third quarter. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go look. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Alec Ogletree. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Now the attention turns back to the Rams offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. The third quarter starts with a run by Gurley. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying at the ground game. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender in the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. It'll go as a gain of 10 there. And it'll be a Los Angeles first down. Red zone opportunity. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you point if you give him any type of blocking. I always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Yeah, I think the blitz there really disrupted the draw. Yeah, and it's usually when you catch him in a blitz, the draw works pretty well. If you're the offensive coordinator right now, that's visor throwing time, isn't it? Because that's supposed to work in a big way. They lost four there, and it's third down. Wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game. But one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe getting better line splits and spreading the field. I think that would be a great nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Olivier Vernon coming in to drop it for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense. And this is going to be roughing the kicker, an inexcusable penalty, Charles. You worked so hard to hold him to a three-point kick. Now you're giving him the ball again with a chance for a touchdown. Green, 39! Green, 39! Following the penalty, it's Gurley. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Todd Gurley taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. This will be fielded at the six. And he's able to get it across the 20 to the 25-yard line. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Cruz has it over the middle. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. All square, 14 apiece to score as we get ready for the fourth quarter. I got number 23. I got number 23. They go play action here on first down. Over the middle to back up. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. So here we go, first and 10 now. One thing I can say pretty safely, 
that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you don't lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Jennings. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there. And it's third down. Hitting the home stretch here in a great game, a tie game. Let's see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. While an incomplete pass certainly doesn't look like a good play, <laughs> for the guy throwing it today, as many interceptions he's thrown, he's got to feel a sigh of relief that the ball actually hit the ground and didn't go in the other direction. Tie game, fourth quarter, and they're going for this thing on fourth down. Manning indeed going for it on four. And that is incomplete. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch-counterpunch, isn't it? And which team has it? And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Dominic Rogers Cromarty. So how about that for a momentum switch? We're in the fourth quarter, and it's a tie game. You've got to take care of the football here. Now their opportunity to take the lead right out the window, and everything is flipped in the other direction. Now a play fake here on first down. And this is going to be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. The interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran the wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing them. First down and goal to go from the seven. On first and goal, Gurley. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Rams use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. And he's got it up and through. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. A beautiful fake. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. And the Giants ready to come out now. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. And that'll bring up second down. Second down now after the incompletion. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. So a second. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Watch left, watch left, watch left. Stop it, stop it here. So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. They'll look to throw. And he's got Will Ty complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Offense comes to the line now first and ten. He'll look to throw. And, oh, a crush.
pressure there as it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he will bring it back. It's an interception return for a Rams touchdown. And on that one, with six defensive backs, did he need to be more careful throwing the football? I mean, I guess obviously in hindsight he did, but... Yeah, hindsight, but even in foresight, when you get six defensive backs on the field, you just know you're going to get multiple coverages. You're never sure what you're going to see. But the biggest one is you don't have much reaction time for your receivers to go get the football because those guys, they're the best cover guys on the field. They go get it. And on that play, they took it the other way for six points. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Eli Manning and company getting set here as they head back onto the field. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. Manning will try again on second down. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. On first down, Manning. And this is Shepard on the catch. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They'll get 19 yards there. And it's first down, New York. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Manning now to throw. It's hauled in by Shepard. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. Into the red zone now, Manning. And his throw is incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And that one was knocked away, and I think the defenders are going to be a little upset with themselves. They made the play on the football, but that one felt like a forced pass by the quarterback. Thought he had someone open. He really wasn't. Maybe an example of having too much confidence in his receiver that no matter what, I'm going to throw it to him. And that was a play made by the defense, and it could have been a bigger one. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. On play action, it's Manning. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it is what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. Well, Charles, the forecast called...